Jim Groom, what happened? Yeah. Why did you banish the people from DS-106? Uh -huh. Well, I'm not really sure what happened that day, Dr. Oblivion. I know you put a lot of trust into me. And I know that you kind of entrusting me with your class in your particular way um, and selecting me to be TA over Martha Burtis was a big choice for you and I totally respect that. Realizing not at all what that choice would lead to ultimately for both of us. But that said, I know that I owe a public apology to everybody out there in DS-106 who I banished on that fateful day almost two weeks ago. I want to say I'm sorry. I wasn't myself. I wasn't who I usually am as Jim Groom. I'm usually this soft, cuddly, very special little person. But that day I was a beast. I was a monster. Uh-huh. Jim Groom. No. Well, you take responsibility Dr. Oblivion. for the banishment. What you have to realize, you realize what you did was wrong. Is that when you left or disappeared, and that's still a little hazy, I think, for everybody in DS. What events? There was a led void you to the banishment. There was a void of leadership. How did it come there about? There was a void of presence. There was a void of direction that I felt like I needed to step into. That I felt like I needed as a TA to represent, and the pressure was so much so that I think I lost yeah, it. You did lose it. Okay, You're I did right. lose it. And I started banishing people from DS-106. I know, did. I did this. We I'm not going to say I didn't do it. But what I am going to say, it was one momentary okay. lapse of discretion. And immediately, and this is one of the things that still for me sits yeah, I mean, but it's one of the things that still for me sits unsettled. Is that you could disappear. And I stepped in for you. For weeks, it seemed. True. And the class immediately turned on me when I had something to say to your daughter, Bianca, and your nephew, John. As soon as I did that, they turned on me like pit bulls. Everybody was like, Jim Groom this, Jim Groom banishing that. I had one momentary lapse of decorum, of reason. And everyone was ready to kind of rip me apart. And I think that's unfair. But yes, I am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, DS-106. I'm sorry for the pain I've caused you. I'm sorry for any strife. I want to let all the people who were... DS-107, know that it's time you can come home because DS-106 is everything you dreamed it would be and more. And I'd like to say thank you officially to Dr. Oblivion for making Please. me his TA and for bringing me into the circle of trust, a circle that's valuable. And for those people who didn't make it in, it drove them mad. We saw what happened to Martha. Um, that's a sad story. She was a really, she once had a lot of potential and a great future in DS-106, but that's gone now. And that's what this class can do to you if you're not careful. And I came this close to that edge, this close to losing it all. But I pulled myself back from that edge so I could live to tell you this tale. Be careful. DS-106 is for life. And that's not a joke. Be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of yours, Jim Grimm. You know that. And I hope you take this as a lesson. And you don't go off your mind mm -hmm. and chop up students. DS-106 cannot sustain any more dead students. No more. Mm -hmm. We're all Dr. Oblivion now. 
Tim Groom.